Welcome back everyone, welcome back, whoops, to Let's Play UFO Extraterrestrials. We have just uh, researched both of the Vipon commanders we still had, and they've, um, well, given us the info on um, the alien mothership and the Avonium, which is like Illyrium 115. And now we are researching the UFO gravity engine, there we go. Project Centaurus. The aliens use very advanced gravity engines created with an element not found on Earth for propulsion of all UFO craft. The engines work on the principle um, of the space uh, deformation caused by vibration of gravitational waves. The core of the engine is an avonium crystal embedded in a pulsating hadron beam. At the proper beam frequency, an impulse gravitational wave comes into existence in the avonium crystal. The gravitational wave can be modified by the hadron beam frequency and the level of beam intensity. The gravitational wave c gives UFO craft incredible maneuverability, which makes them a very elusive target for our conventional weapons in dogfight confrontations. Okay, now we can do the personal anti-graph system. Ooh, Project, Project Centaurus, what the hell is that? UFO gravity control and all of that. That looks very cool, anti-graph system, so we can fly. Didn't really need to fly on any of the missions. I didn't really say, oh, I wish I could fly. Well, maybe on one. I can't quite remember. Spaceship allies, landing and storage platform, distribution. Jesus! Advanced workshop. The discovery of a UFO gravity engine capable of a space distortion opens undreamed of possibilities in interstellar travel. Producing a suitable engine is, however, only one of many necessary steps that must be taken before this project can be accomplished. We can expect to experience both disappointment and triumph on the road towards mastery of this means of space travel. It will definitely be necessary to develop new materials for construction, including a new computing technology able to both immediately determine the ship's location in space and navigate safely within a distorted environment. At this time, we cannot even say for sure whether the human body will be able to withstand such dangerous conditions. Development of a spaceship capable of space travel across incurved space will assuredly be one of the most daunting tasks which humankind has ever undertaken. Once achieved, however, it will be also one of its greatest accomplishments, opening up a plentitude of new possibilities for humankind. Why did all of this open now? I mean, yes, we've you know, done the alien commander, but what the hell? We've had plenty of UFOs we've captured, and we can only research the, you know, power core now? Look at all this. Landing and storage platform, spaceship allies, distribution point. What? What is all this? Laboratory? What? We already have laboratories. Advanced workshop. Let's do this, I guess. <laughs> Laboratory? What? doesn't tell you what it does. Oh, what the hell is this? Cent Centaurus project. Engine injector, landing storage distribution. Holy crap. Hibernation room, pilot's cabin. Laboratory. Oh, that's why. Living quarters. So, are you saying that what we're doing is basically not killing the aliens, but fleeing the planet in a starship? Is that it? Or are these two options you have? One, destroy the aliens, or two, flee the planet. I have no idea. Uh, anyway, let's... I have some craft to equip. We've got plasma cannons here, but... I want those ion cannons, really. There. Missiles, still nothing. Um, yeah, let's transfer some of this stuff. To Peloponnesia first, I guess. Uh, those iron cannons and plasma cannons. Send! Advanced workshop has been completed. There we go. The advanced workshop provides us with means of rapid manufacture of sophisticated weaponry. Our recent observations of skirmishes and our examinations of alien artifacts acquired on missions have allowed us to perfect the workshop. The major aspect of the workshop which has been enhanced in this advanced workshop is undoubtedly the improved uh, anti-gravity force fields, which complete the formation of products and greatly speed up the process of production. The advanced workshop, as well as takes up more space, which will end undoubtedly prove ad advantageous in the manufacture of new air fighters. What? The advanced workshop as well takes up more space. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, the advanced workshop represents a leap in production efficiency, something every good manager should uh, try to achieve. Thanks for that lesson. More advanced weapons, which we used to be unavailable to our soldiers, may now aid us in our fight against the aliens. Okay. Um. Oh, let's do the Cyclops. I want to see what this is all about. It's just a tank, but... Um, yeah, where the hell am I gonna put that? I've got alien containment here in a workshop. And a surgery here. Yeah, these workshops aren't really... Hmm, I guess I could destroy the surgery. Damn it. Yeah. Destroy the surgery to make the workshop. Okay, let's sell this building and go back, because otherwise the game crashes, and sell the surgery. And go back just in case. Right, advanced workshop. Bang! Man, these things are so big, there's no space for anything. Transfer items to Peloponnesia. Okay, still 24 days for iron defense. Um... What? No. I want to go to Peloponnesia. There we go, go to base, and have these guys change the cannons to Iron Cannon, Plasma Cannon, and Plasma Cannon. There we go. Should be at least a little better. Okay, there's the Cyclops. Oh! Oh, okay, so that's not a tank, it's actually a mech. That looks cool. Cyclops is a heavy combat robot. It was created as a support weapon of the in infantry, fit for accompanying soldiers to large UFO incursions. Cyclops is approximately two meters tall. It belongs to the group of human-controlled robots known as the Walkers. What? It belongs to the group of human-controlled robots known as the Walkers. What? Do you mean the pilots are a group of humans known as walkers? What? These robots are designed to be operated by a human inside who controls the machine much like a driver controls a car. The operator is situated in an egg-shaped chamber that is well protected from both aggressive chemicals and extreme temperatures conditions outside. Unlike the first generation, the current models are not operated by limb movements anymore, but rather by thought commands coming from the operator's brain. Thanks to this solution, the robot could be further miniaturized and its speed of both movement and operation increased. Sure enough, the velocity is not as high as that of a vehicle, but its outstanding firepower makes up for that. <laughs> Why not just give it tracks then? Sure enough, oh, one arm conceals a rocket launcher with six guided missiles, the other is equipped with a powerful ion cannon, capable of using the auto shot mode, excellent. Furthermore, the machine possesses an excellent aiming system, able to respond to a target being in the viewing field with instantaneous fire. So does that mean 100% reaction fire? Although the Cyclops is rather slow, its toughness along with its outstanding firepower represent invaluable support for the calf. Nevertheless, we must keep in mind that Cyclops is not indestructible and that the alien's combat means may keep getting better. Um... Yeah, let's let's do the UFO gravity control then. All of this stuff for for the spacecraft, I guess. Yeah, and we're still making the ion cannons. Of course, this is taking longer now because we only have ten technicians, unfortunately. Battle cruiser, avonium mining. No, you're not gonna mine any avonium because we're gonna take your cruiser. Send everything. Ha! So there. There we go. Exterminator interceptor. Wow. Ugh. Gravity control is a piece of alien equipment found aboard ships that enables the aliens to in some way remotely control gravity up to a few hundred meters far from their vessel. There is no music. Manipulation of heavy object is the most likely utilization. There we go. Uh, of the gravity control device. CAF scientists have hypothesized that gravity controls... Uh, units are also used for abducting humans, cows, and other animals for experimental purposes. However, we still do not know why the aliens seem to choose cows as the targets of their experiments. The gravity control has its own energy generator and two gravity alternators that allow movement of two objects simultaneously. 
The gravity control device is not of much use for us in the flight against the uh, fight against the alien threat. However, the understanding of some general principles used in these machines has advanced our knowledge in the study of gravity engines and gravitational manipulation. So now we can do the exterminator, which sounds good. It's probably just a slight upgrade to the bloody previous interceptor. Really gives you no inclination to research them, but oh well. There we go. Ooh, looks sleek. The Exterminator is a calf long distance fighter aircraft developed from its predecessor, the Stormbringer. The Exterminator is fitted with two gravity engines and an alien reactor. The gravity engines guarantee extremely good maneuverability, however, it cannot exceed some speed limits that come from the principles of gravity engines. For this reason, a reactor was incorporated into the power plant systems. The reactor provides additional power that increases cruise speed and flight range. The fuselage is made of advanced craft armor. The advanced craft armor provides passive and active protection and consists of two layers. Laminated heavy alien alloys in the outer layer of the armor results in heavier aircraft weight. Wow. The maneuverability of the exterminator is slightly re reduced compared to the Stormbringer. What? The exterminator is designed to carry air-to-air -air missiles for long-range attack and a cannon to dogfight alien vessels at close range. Just like every bloody interceptor we had since. <sighs> Deep breath. So... What? What? Oh. The, n the Night Wolf is actually... Yeah, I thought... I wanted to say, you know, the Night Wolf kind of looks um, much more advanced. And it, it, in fact, it is. We just researched the previous tier of Interceptors. Ugh. <sighs> Okay, let's do spaceship alloys. Yeah, let's do that. And yeah, all lot not a lot of UFOs coming in, but hey, gives us time to do stuff, right? There we go, Spaceship Alloys has been completed. As material for both the inner and outer bearing structures of the Centaurus ship, uh, an improved version of the advanced craft armor has been used to fulfill the need for a material of better mechanical and shielding characteristics required for a construction this big and intricate. Wait, what? As material for both the inner and outer bearing structures? This doesn't make any sense, see? As material for both the inner and outer bearing structures of the Centaurus ship, an improved version of the air advanced aircraft uh, craft armor has been used to fulfill... It's just, uh, these sentences make no sense. I know what they're trying to say, but holy crap. English. The main enhancement was the elimination of the low mechanical consistency of the superconductive threads that the deteriorated uh, the total mechanical compactness. What? The main advancement was the elimination of the low mechanical consistency of the superconductive threads that had deteriorated the total mechanical compactness. The threads have been replaced with special superconductive large volume composite. The composite does not only provide a larger cross-section of the conductor allowing for greater currents implying stronger fields for the shields, but also contributes to the increase of the total hull integrity and helps thus protect the ship from the undesirable accelerated stardust particles. Of course they're undesirable. Are there any particles that are desirable in space when you're flying at great speeds? I don't think so. Um, right, landing and storage platform. So let's see. Yeah, I wonder what happens when you complete the ship. Or do you just take the ship to the, uh, to the uh, other place? You know, to the mothership. But why would you need all of this then? With regards to the Centaurus' size, it would be impractical if these, uh, this Colossus had to land every time a recon is needed. For such tasks, we have designed smaller transporters and scout ships to carry out missions outside of the vicinity of Centaurus' landing site, but still within planetary bounds. To accommodate these vessels, a landing platform has been incorporated into the ship plan so that Centaurus can serve as a harbor for them. This facility can refuel and repair the plane, and it and also has a storage capacity sufficient to stock supplies. The platform is located on the very bottom of the ship and is accessible by an external gateway. In order to avoid undesirable pressure drops in the hangar bay, the entrance is protected by a special one-way shield that allows objects from outside to enter but prevents the inner atmosphere from escaping. 
So does it prevent the inner objects from escaping as well? And of course we'll have to make all of this. Distribution point. Let's see the distribution point. Didn't it say we just did the living quarters? That's odd. It's really odd. Uh, landing and storage, yeah. Mm. Distribution point has been completed. These are really quick. A ship like the Centaurus contains a huge amount of facilities that need multiple energy supplies. Because of the enormous size of the ship, its overall consumption and distance from the central energy source, energy distribution becomes a problem. Why? I mean, we have no problems today. Are you saying the ship is 1,000 kilometers long or something? For the facilities that require small and medium-sized energy supplies, an electric main backup in each ship's section will do. For the facilities with high energy requirements, power supply would be an insurmountable problem because of distribution difficulties and because of the interruptions caused by electromagnetic fields. Okay, ever heard of shielding? As a result, these uh, facilities were equipped with miniature annihilators and an antimatter supply. Was designed by a special distribution system. Due to the efficiency of the annihilation process, only a small amount of antimatter is needed to produce a huge amount of energy. No kidding. Energy transfer inside the ship's hull does not generate any unwanted fields, and its supply and distribution, including backup emergency accumulators of antimatter in various sections, offers an ideal and very simple solution. Yeah, that's very simple. You know, unlike cables. The laboratory. Yeah, I'm intrigued now by this Centaurus project. Let's see, everything still needs to be... Yeah, it needs to be produced. Okay. Full speed ahead. There we go. Centaurus Laboratory is intended f uh, for the spaceship Centaurus. No kidding. Thanks to this laboratory, we are able to research new discoveries during Centaurus missions. The Centaurus Laboratory arose out of the original concept for the research laboratory at the CAF base. Nevertheless, it was necessary to redesign the original concept. Yeah, excuse me. It was necessary to reduce the laboratory's size and ensure against the interference from Centaurus's other facilities, most of all from the force field while Centaurus enters curved space. On the other hand, the facility has access to the computing capacity of Centaurus's central supercomputer. The control unit of the nanobot... What? The control unit of the nanobot has been successfully reduced by more than 70%. The control unit of the nanobot? <laughs> what? And if you notice there, I think these things are actually taken from the UFO. Which is kind of odd. Um, we have improved the simulation algorithms, and despite the fact that the laboratory has only a limited capacity, the crew of Centaurus will have access to the most modern technologies from our wars with aliens. We don't know what we will discover through Centaurus' expedition, but the onboard laboratory gives us the ability to deal with every challenge. Are you saying that the game will sort of progress to the Centaurus part then, and we have a few missions to do on that or something? I don't know, we'll see. Living quarters. That's the last thing, actually. And then we can just make everything. Which is going to take a long time, I guess. Living quarters, there we go. Centaurus, is, uh, Centaurus crew members spend their time in their living quarters unless they are in hibernation. It is a room in which the crew sleeps, who eat and relax when their daily duties are over, and which provide the crew with necessary comforts. During the central rest period, substituting planetary night, uh, most of the room is filled with folding beds on which the crew sleep. In the morning, the beds are uh, folded and set into the ceiling, and the free room is used for daily activities of the crew. Good living conditions of the crew are one of the key factors for keeping up high morale and ultimately mission success. Why the hell did we need to research this? Just make plans, I guess. But, yeah, weird. Anyway, um, let's do this, and then we can start producing all that Centaurus stuff. But of course, we're still uh, waiting for the advanced workshop. And we're making some iron cannons, another one. Oh, well that was quick. Yeah, let's make the Thunderbolt launch. 41 days. Let's see these modules here. Oh yeah, I could make some of these Cyclops. Let's see the modules, there we go. Let's see how long they take, actually. Um, living quarters is the easiest one. Yeah, not much. Why not? Let's do that. Also, equip everyone. Oh. So we have to transfer to Patria all those lovely iron cannons. There we go. Send. 
Pink Patria. You have iron cannons now. One too many. So you can send the last one back to Peloponnesia because they need another one. There. Personal iron shield has been completed. There we go. We have taken the advances in shield technology and applied them to the personal shield generators for a stronger shield. I couldn't be arsed to stay longer in, at work, so I just put all uh, this text here. I hope it's enough. <laughs> anyway. I have fun ranting at the game. Don't judge. Anyway, I will see you next time. So, thank you very much for watching. We're going to be doing the personal anti-graph system next. And of course, I will be saving the game. Otherwise, it poops on me. Bye!